It's been about an hour since the disappearance of Ravensward Labs. And the six of you find yourselves walking through the front door of the Roost's premier watering hole, the speakeasy. LMA Walton is performing a jazz routine, adding a sultry tone to the midday crowd. Her low, dulcet voice drones over the bar. Conversations are held in hushed whispers. As you open the doors, an oppressive layer of pipe smoke swiftly rushes outside. It assaults your senses. Stood behind the bar is a man in ill-fitting garb, his wide-brimmed hat struggling to stay above his brow. A mustache grows untamed from beneath his gray-blue eyes. Ezekiel Dunbar waves a welcome to the six strangers entering his saloon, and sets his associate to get a table ready for five of you, and an odd little duck struts over to Callum, urging him to sit down. Callum, still bleeding from the ears, eardrums ruptured, kind of in shock. Buck has talked you back to your senses and led you here as a place to sit down and recuperate. Zeke's assistant is a young girl with auburn hair, the same gray-blue eyes as Zeke. She motions for five of you to sit at a booth, hands out a menu, as the small duck approaches you, Callum. It's got a pastel feather coloration urges you to sit. It will, uh, it has a small little medical bag across its wings, and it just begins getting out some bandages. There's a light, and they, it just kind of starts flashing things, quacking at you mysteriously, and you're just kind of shell-shocked, staring straight ahead. The speakeasy is well known for pleasant vibes and conversation, but the food and drink are far from an afterthought, as the girl introduces herself as Annette. What happened to, uh, your friend over there, he looks like he's seen better days. Is everything okay? I don't think we're sure. It just blew up. Was he involved in the the explosion at the lab? No, uh, we think so. Oh, wow. Well, I suppose he's lucky to be alive. Yeah, we're not entirely sure. I mean, I know him from my past, but I don't know what he was doing in there. I'm glad he's okay, for the most part. Our little Our little friend here should hopefully have him... Feeling a little better, at least, as long as he's not too far gone. Well, have a seat. Let me know if there's anything I can uh, I can get you. I'll get start a round of round of drinks for anybody. Looks like you've had a long day. Yes, right there. <laughs> Whiskey all around. I'm, I'll buy. Sure. <clears throat> She'll kind of uh, straighten out an apron and head back behind the counter. Uh, Zeke gives you a semi-familiar stare. Somewhat recognizes old. Uh, Old law enforcement. If if there's anywhere Buck would be in Fletcher's Roost, the Speakeasy is a good place to go for intel. Yep. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, the five of you seat yourselves in a like deep brown leather like tavern booth with a wide table and a few candles in the middle. It's pretty dark in here. Everybody's sort of speaking in hushed whispers, but otherwise, the table's yours. Yeah, Buck's just keeping his wits about him. Mm -hmm. He's just waiting for alcohol to be injected into his system Yeah, currently. Um, Five shot glasses and a bottle of whiskey arrive at the table as a a tab has been started for you. Perfect. Just take mine. Cheers. Yes, sir. What a ride. (laughs) And just down the hatch. Gone. Cheers. (laughs) Even drinking is gross for you. As you do stuff... Adelaide's going to be looking at the menu, but kind of staring at Faraday, trying to see in the shadow of the hood before she asks any questions. <laughs> so what's the game plan we got going on here? Like, building's blowing up as soon as we walk into town, walking around with, sorry, no offense, you, um, and then a mummy, uh, and then teenage girl, teenager, I don't know how old you are, and then... uh. Yeah, distinguishing looking gentleman. That's I right. appreciate that. And then we have a small child who just blew up in a building who's still alive. Maybe some introductions are in order. Yes. Uh, Buck Winchester. All right, then. Uh, Adelaide McKenzie. I'm known as T. Carol. Good I to am, meet you. I am Faraday. There we have that's, it. That's Callum over there. And you know Callum? Yeah, he's, uh, he's one of my cousins. Well, that's helpful. I could see it. Yeah, it's a bit of stroke of luck, actually. Why is that? Run into a, a family member where 
it's actually a, a place I was looking to go to while I was here, and it looks like he worked there, so I look forward to talking to him when he's recovered. Do all your family members blow things up? Not all. Some of them do. Wait, that was where you're supposed to work? That's what I was looking for, yes. I TOLD YOU SHE WAS SHIT! <laughs> what is even going on here? I'm just trying to get my bearings right now. First, I run to Raps over here, spy on this lady, and then, just in the center of town, BOOM! Big ol' explosion, where we meet you, fine folk. So, what's going on? Cause, I'm gonna need to get it somewhere else. Anybody know when the next train leaves out of town? Well, I just got off the boat here with Professor Carroll. I don't even know where the train is, but I need to keep an eye out for Professor Ravensworth to get more information about Callum and the experiments. You think the professor's still kicking after that? Well, Callum made it out all right. It looks like he's on the switch that made the place go kaboom. What if she was further away than him? Who knows if she was even there? Fair. Fair enough. I've survived bad, bad things. <laughs> oh, we can tell. She might be alive. It's true. Thank you, Faraday. What happened to you? It's a lot of trauma. I was struck by lightning about 15 years ago, and it destroyed my skin. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab some food real quick. Steak, 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 good. So, do you know who you're after? I am after a group that had a black flag with a red boar head. Uh, I start choking on my food when you say that. <laughs> It's all right, let it go. <laughs> Is that who you're after as well? I I am also looking for something similar. The same pre people? Maybe. What's your story then? I am looking for my relatives. Where are they? I don't know. Do you have a clue or? Just that same symbol. Are they with that symbol? Are you from the same place? No, never seen him before. And you've never seen her before? No, I have never seen her before. I am from Hak Manoen, which is a very, very remote village in the desert. And where are you from? Yarborough. Well, I'm after a symbol too. I'm uh, doing my life's mission is to complete this Galahorn. And I notice you have a red sash uh, that you're wearing that has a similar symbol. Uh, do you know much about that? I don't. <laughs> That's inconvenient. Is this where, like, so, like, I guess this is sidetracking a little bit, but sure. um, since it's in my native tongue or a language that was spoken in the desert, is that something that, like, I can roll on or... I will say... Would that help in yeah, like, the how, grand scheme of how things? How are you in religion? Negative one. Negative one? Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard, mm -hmm. but you can try. The runes specifically lack any particular meaning. Monowin writing is, I guess, the closest one would maybe either be... No, it would have to be kind of like Mandarin, where one letter in our comprehension is a sentence. So an entire glyph on this scarf could tell the story of a full myth. Um, you get bits and pieces that it relates to not the not the three that Adelaide or Carol would be familiar with. There are a few triplicate pairings of gods over the many course of history. But specifically for you two. It's a it's not it's not a great look. Because the first glyph that you look through, the only one that really triggers in this moment at least, um, is a glyph. The closest approximation I could give you would be seeing something invoking one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The first glyph denotes uh, pestilence and magical death. The god's name that is invoked for you is Kshult. K-J-O-L-T. To, to make this as basic as I can, you have Arcturus, which is the god of gods, and you have Hurik, which is the old god of gods. So picture it, Kronos, Titan god, you have Zeus. That would be their relationship. Arcturus banishes Hurik, but Hurik had three children. 
before he was banished. For now, they're not relevant, and the knowledge will be kind of lost. But the only thing to remember is those three children, once they got banished, now have three dark reflections. The pestilence god that is being invoked by that rune is one of the reflections. I'm assuming that then, based off of that, the pestilence is the dark side of it, and then the good harvest is the light side of it. Very good. So I think I would like to share that information with the group. Okay. Um, just under the guise of, like, this is the only thing I know, uh, or that I've gotten a good glimpse of so far. Long story short, pestilence, probably bad thing. Good harvest being part of the same glyph is not uncommon. The Manoan tribes followed the turning of the seasons, the cycles of everything. Even though down in the desert you don't really see like a true winter, you get very cold at night, you get very hot in the day. So they respect all of those aspects of it. Great. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's taken a while to get this food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buck, you'll come back. <laughs> with, uh, oh, I'm not coming. I just order it, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up around there for a second. Okay. Yeah, a whole bunch of food arrives. It's all steak. Yeah. A whole meat. bunch of steak arrives in front of you. <laughs> Sorry to the vegetarians out there. You're eating meat Is today. it just a piece of steak? Do we get, like, a side at least? Uh, yeah, there's probably some, po- yeah, some yeah. potatoes, lightly seasoned, maybe a little bit of gravy. There's absolutely no steak sauce or anything like that because that is a cardinal sin in Buck's Eye. So I, I'm going to go off to the tomb eventually here. Uh, do you know where you're going? No. You don't know where you're going. <laughs> okay. And but you're going to hang around until you find out about this professor. Yeah, I just need to talk to Callum once he's recovered. Yeah. And we'll see. And you're off with Buck. (laughs) Potentially. Well, I guess we need to find out where Buck's going. It seems fortuitous for the two of you to at least stick together. He's a bit of a translator for what you've got going on. Yeah, that has been a huge help. And it seems like you've got a little bit of a connection to it as well. Yes. I would like to follow you to this tomb. Oh, fantastic. That's great. We welcome you. Uh, I'll go just check on Callum. Okay. He's like kind of blinking in and out a little bit. He's definitely shell-shocked, but he's coming back to himself. I'm going to put one hand on his shoulder and the other hand on the folder. Be like, it's good to see you, Callum. I hope you're doing okay. Do you mind if I take a look at this? His His hand is like a death grip on this thing. But as soon as your hand hits his shoulder, you start talking. It it kind of like loosens up a bit, and he just nods. Uh, I'll take a look at it. Note the heading on it, and open it, and there's nothing in it at all. No. It seems like whatever was in there. To make it easier, he's holding like most of a folder. Hi there, Callum. Are you feeling okay? <sighs> no. Do you know if Professor Ravensworth's okay? No. Who? Professor Ravensward. That's the lab you were at. Yes, that's the lab I was at. I, I, I don't know. Where are we? It's okay, Callum. We're at the speakeasy now. It's called the Fiddler's Guild, I think. It's me, Adelaide. Do you remember me? Yes. Okay, good. Do you remember anyone that was at the lab with you? Yes, you were there. Oh. Who else? That guy was there too. Aye, this is not good. Yeah, it doesn't take like a well-trained doctor to know this. This kid is fried. Okay. In more ways than one. Um, he he definitely should not be allowed to lose consciousness in the next several hours. Okay. Uh, is the is the duck still taking care of him? Okay. Um, With remarkable finesse for someone that has webbed feet and yeah. like wings. Okay. But with remarkable dexterity, is like manipulating. I will thank the duck for helping, and we we have some food over at the table, and he's able to eat. I right, think just goes back to like listening, and I'll head back to the table. How is the fried man? Uh, he's fried indeed. I don't know. Uh what to do right now he seems to have forgotten everything like everything so he has uh, no memories does he remember you he he said he did but i don't believe him um yeah i'm not sure 
what to do right now. Are you going to look after him? feel a little obligated to, <laughs> given he's my cousin and all, but um, I might see if something jogs loose in a little bit. Otherwise, may just tow him along till he comes to. Do you mind if I speak to him? No, go for it. How are you feeling? Fine, I guess. You smell nice. Thanks. You smell not how I expected, but it's nice. Pull a card, Callum. No, what? Do, do I show it to you? Yes. This doesn't seem like a good card. Mm, it's not the best. A am I cursed? Not cursed, but there's lots of change coming. I feel like a lot of change just happened. You mean to say there's more? Does it get worse before it gets better? Yes, we're connected. Do I know you? That's what this card means. Uh, okay. We're connected in our search. I think that we should stay with one another. Okay, I don't know what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? I don't know either. <laughs> All right, witch. That's not my name. Well, you haven't told me your name. T. Well, T, if anything, this has been an odd afternoon, but I don't know what else to do, and I'll follow your lead. So you'll stick around? Sure. I appreciate that. Missive boards line the walls of the speakeasy, with various messages awaiting an adventurer's approval. Posters and reward notices bury the cork boards pinned to the walls beneath, each layer overtaking the prior in a mosaic of ceaseless errands clawing for attention. Sat at the bar near Buck is a masked and bandaged person, standing nearly a foot shorter than him. Half of their face is covered, and they swirl a clear shot glass at the bar. Ezekiel tends to a few other patrons before sliding down to Buck. Sheriff? How you doing, buddy? Ain't seen you in a while. What brings you back in town? That's the thing I was kind of getting to. You seen any of the uh, Hellkites roll through here? Sure have, brother. They're on the lookout for somebody. They've been real active lately. Seems somebody kicked the hornet's nest. What a shame. When they rolled through here, did they, uh, with a woman by chance? Nah, nah. They's looking for someone. Put a poster on the wall. I was about to tear it down. Well, right on. Well, I appreciate it. Just keep your ears out for me if you hear anything come through here. Yeah, you might want to take a look at the papers. You either need to get out of here an hour ago, or you might be in for the night. What do you mean? He'll, he'll slam a broadsheet in front of you. There are several stories in the news. The biggest one... Winchester Farm burns down. Local sheriff suspects arson. Lock your doors at night. Keep water on hand. Report any suspicious activity to local authorities. Right below that. Ravensword Labs is missing. Authorities say the lab vanished without a trace. Be on the lookout for the lab and stay clear of the lot in case it comes back. Local coven disowns reckless necromancer. Lock your doors at night. Keep clear of night soil men until further notice. Local constabulary institutes curfew. All citizens must return to their residence no later than 8 o'clock. Authorities will be available to escort anyone out past sundown to their homes until further notice. Yeah, seems like uh, it's been a busy, busy day. Picked a heck of a time to come back here. Just my luck. Uh, two more whiskeys, please. You got it, brother. And he'll slam down five gold on the table. Way too much. For information later. If you need somewhere to stay, we got, we got rooms. If you register that motley band of yours with the guilds, we get a discount going. Yeah, what do you got? Like a sheet or something that I got to fill out? Just needs names. All right. Well, give me a few, and I'm going to walk over to the poster board. And I'm going to take this down for you, and I'll just take it, and I'll slide it in my pocket. And I'll walk over with the newspaper in the underarm and my two glasses. I'll just kind of squeeze myself up next to wraps over here. I'll slam the paper down the center of the table, and down goes one, slides in the middle, and he'll just hold on to the second one. This is the newspaper? Yeah. Yeah, I will immediately stand up and be reading them. 
I just want to like, as I go through, be like, <gasps> is that you? The witch? No. I'm assuming that one. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, that's my farm. Is that... Did you burn it? Yeah, I'm trying to collect insurance. You know, my entire life's work. I'm just like, you know what would be a really good thing to do on a Tuesday? Blow up my entire life's goal. No, I didn't do it. Do you know who did? I got a good idea. Is it the boar? Called the Hellkite Legionnaires. Red boar's head, black banner. Do you think maybe they're the ones that blew up the lab? No, I'm going to guess your friend is the one that blew up the lab. No. He had the lever in his hand. But you don't know that that's what blew it up. It's just a lever. It, that could have been for... I a, mean, it seemed like an electrical explosion, and that looked like a lever to... This doesn't even say it was an explosion. It says it left. It just went away. <laughs> Look, it says, be careful, it might come back. <laughs> now that's some weird voodoo magic, man. Not something that they could do that I know of. Well, we don't know for sure till Calum regains his memories, but it seems like at least the three of you have a connection to this. All I know is I need to get out of here. Yeah, Zeke, you see these people? I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here quick. Well, my friend, uh, I got some more curfews to do. kicking in real soon. You either got a, either got a jet now or stay the night. Do you know how I can get to the tomb of Saint Hagakaya? I assume you're familiar. Not in the slightest, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That rings no bells. No bells. Okay. What's the easiest way to get around here? You got some trains? What, do you, what are we working with? Trains would be a good way to do it. If you've got a line on uh, Sinclair or Duquesne, either one of those will get you out of here. But uh, right now, I, I I know Duquesne just had a, some kind of accident. They're light on hands, so they're hiring. They got a job board posting over there. Uh, Sinclair is looking for... Somebody to fetch some some trains out of bounds that would get you out past curfew. I do need if some you're money that too. Desperate. Can I send a post? Where to? Well, I need to get word out back to my uh, my media friend I know back in the old town. We got a mail ship leaving in two three days. Perfect. Yeah. And so I'm gonna go and write a letter. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. And I'm gonna tell her that we found another piece of the Gallahorn, and that we need uh, some funds to support our findings. And expeditions. And then I, I need to look at this job board, too. So yeah. So I need some money. Have, have a look, brother. He'll he'll kind of point you in a direction. It's over by the uh, by the front door, so that most eyes will be on it. Um, there are currently... There are five that would catch your eyes very quickly. They're the biggest postings. Um, one is from Duquesne Locomotives, in need of rail hands to clear snow. Three silver a day. Additional pay for each mile of cleared line. Report to the Duquesne Rail Yard, if interested. Sinclair needs able bodies to retrieve damaged locomotive on the south line to Dream Hill Terminal. 15 gold upon safe return of the locomotive. Rail wraith provided upon request. Report to Sinclair Steam Co. if interested. Cam blast removal requested in the Fields District. Report to Idlegard Farms and speak to Connor for more information. Two silver per cab blast remove. Bonus of five gold if you relocate the hive or remove them completely. Winchester Ammunition Hall. 300 crates need rail transport to Ravensong. Report to Winchester Rail Yard if interested. 600 gold upon completion. Train not provided. Tamers needed for powder harvest. Half Rock Mill, Fair Lane Mill, Kleinfeller Mill. 8 silver per pound. Multiple positions needed. Uh, Duquesne, Sinclair, and Winchester are the three companies in town right now that are looking for help that would get you out past curfew if that was your goal. No, no, I think I'm going to go back to the group and uh, accept that I'm laying low for the night. If we're all going to be looking into the Hellcats, we got to do it proper. Register with the guild, form an adventuring group, but that means we got to stick together and see this through. I'm up for a wee bit of adventure. I could use the help and the money. I have no concept of money, but I understand revenge and what it'll take to get it. Is that a yes, Faraday? That is a yes. I haven't got any other options. I'm in. What about you, Spooks? I will go along with this idea, so long as it leads to answers. What about you, kid? Did anyone see a puppet today? I believe they called us squires. A wee wooden lad on strings? Aye, said their name before it wandered off after the explosion. I don't know why, but that's the only thing I remember. I can't recall if it was before or after, but I remember it being there. I feel like I need to find it. So I'd like to tag along. Maybe we'll run into it. 
Also, I don't really know where I live or where my stuff is, if I even have any stuff, so I'll come along. If you need help finding that thing, I can help you in the morning. Pretty good at finding things that don't want to be found. Okay, great. Well, I put up some lines with Zeke for info on the Hellkites. We'll keep an eye out for the puppet of yours. And that horn you keep going on about, Doc. Let's go chat with Colt, make this official. In the morning, we'll get this all worked out. Aye. Excellent. Cheers to that. Okay. The six walk up to Colt Dunbar, helping his brother behind the bar with the evening rush. Howdy, folks. What can I do for you? Whiskey? Rooms? Dinner? What'll it be? Looking to register. Where do we sign up? Right here, Sheriff. We got guild halls for rent. They sleep up to 20. Rent is three gold a month. And you'll have someone assigned to you once you're squared away. They'll handle any missives, travel arrangements, and communications for you. You'll have somewhere to stay, and should you need it, we got access to the rail lines out back. Carol, you mind giving that contract a read through? Make sure everything's done up proper? Let me take a look. His monocle slides over his eye and scans the document as his eyes dart across the contract, searching for any signs of trickery in the dense pages. Yeah, Buck, it all checks out. Looks like a good option for us. Buck slides six gold to Colt behind the bar. Two months up front. My kind of deal. Welcome to the guild. What do we call you? All right, I'm, uh, I'm heading to bed. If y'all need me, more than welcome to come knock on the door if any other conversations being made. If not, I'll be down here for some breakfast, and then we can kind of go from there. Doing all right? Do you know where she went? You have, like, a feeling, like a bead or a reed? Think real hard, buddy. Hi, Buck. How do you okay over there? Yeah, just some, uh, seem like some undead folks out in the streets. Out there in the streets? Why are they here? Is this just a thing that happens? Not that I'm familiar with. Hold on there. What, am I not even allowed to look at these things? Don't want them to make a scene that we're here, so let's, let's take it easy. We're going to go ahead and sneak our way outside, and then we'll determine what we need to do in a second. All right. Just breathe. Uh-huh. Now we slink. I'm, and I'm, Buck's going to start going. He's just going to kind of be relatively... He's not going to be, like, crouched down or anything, but he'll just kind of walk with, like, lighter footsteps with sticks. I'm minimal effort. I don't believe what he's saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, as you are kind of sat alone, nursing a drink, and just kind of going over some notes, thinking about the ridiculousness of this day, that same shorter figure that's been kind of hobbling at the bar finally drinks the, the shot glass that they've been swilling around for long enough that it's probably lost any sense of good taste. Swill it, they'll put the shot glass face down, and they put a gold piece sized coin on the counter, but it is smeared with green paint. And they kind of slide it across, and Zeke takes notice of it as the figure just kind of turns and saunters towards the door, straightens their hat, and as they look back into the bar, you just see like a pale, pale white face. Very bizarre, kind of scarring across the cheeks. There are two lines that run from both sides of the mouth all the way back to the ears. There's part of a like white masking over their face with some bandages underneath, and a green eye that is almost like a fire. Uh, as it kind of like sparkles in here and it kind of catches the light. And as they turn and exit, there's a wanted poster hanging on the wall that catches your eye, mostly for the reward value. 800 gold for the capture of a sketch that vaguely matches that description, mostly in the one green eye. There's a name below it. It says Lautsa Shirai, former ghoul caller. Highly skilled. Do not underestimate. Cemeteries, graveyards, mausoleums on lockdown until captured. And as that green coin sits there, Zeke just flashes it towards the Legion's light soldiers that are sitting in a nearby booth and just flicks him the coin as if he doesn't want anything to do with it. Bud will take note of that and kind of like misses the stone as it hits. 
and just kind of look to you and then look to the door. And everybody who's still in the bar hears this kind of low dragging sound from the streets as they open the door and head out of the speakeasy. Zeke waits for the Legion's light soldiers to step outside. Goes, sorry folks, we're in for the night. And just locks the door as they exit. See yourself to your rooms. See you in the morning. As outside, you immediately hear the sound of gun blades being drawn, shots being fired. As Buck and Adelaide sneak over to a window, you see three shambling figures. Um, one of them is missing a limb and is held together by a weird kind of purplish smoke. Not too dissimilar from Bud. Yeah, but as the two of you get to your get to the door to, to slink outside, there is a rattling on the door handle. Okay, I'm gonna kinda press my ear up against it. Can I with like the pull and force of like the door and like the rattle of it, can I get a gauge of what's on the other side of that? The door could be opened if someone knew how to operate the handle. It sound the sound that you're picking up on is like fingernails or something kind of hard scraping on wood and knuckles kind of connecting with brass for the doorknob. Okay. But you start to hear gunfire as that door starts to jitter. Sounds intense out there. Should we let them in? Hold on. And I'm going to kind of just let the thing give it like a minute or two to see what's kind of going on. See if they kind of like lose interest. Yeah, there's a there's a continuing barrage of gunshots outside. More and more louder and louder. Um, you hear shouting from a few of the soldiers. Got him! No, I didn't. He's getting back up. And that that handle on the doorknob, suddenly it just, there's a huge thud and a little bit of a splinter of wood from outside as another gunshot hits. And then suddenly that body just <laughs> slumps to the ground outside. Go grab the others real quick. And uh, I'll kind of, I'll holster the uh, rifle and I'll mm -hmm. pull out my revolver. Okay. And I'll have sticks there and I'll just kind of hold the doorknob and go, it's been a while since I've tried doing something like this. And I'll just take the doorknob, I'll ring it open and I'll just hold my gun out. And okay. There is a human-ish body in a vast state of decay. Um, I won't make you roll, given the circumstance. These would be the Night Soil men. Um, they are reconstituted undead made from the bodies of criminals that are used to handle sewage disposal, trash collection at night. Jobs that, frankly, are either too dangerous for people to do or just unsavory um, and don't pay well. So, undead labor. Um, very, very rare for them to be causing problems. But they are in the news right now. Front page news. I'm going to give this thing a quick once over and make sure. I mean, cl clearly it's dead, but yes. is it dead? It appears to be dead again. Yeah, yes. okay. So it's, it's unmoving. Re yes, re-dead. Okay. Yeah, I'll just kind of take the body and I'll skirt it away from like the side of the door and I'll kind of uh, poke my head out around the corner just yeah. in the distance of where the gunfire is. Yeah, there's about a half dozen of these weird-looking shamblers kind of heading around. Um, and then off in the distance, you do see the Legion's light members kind of standing under a big kind of street light, in a sense. Um, and behind them is a massive wax elephant whose trunks are illuminated with like a brilliant golden light. And as the men are firing their guns, the bullets that come out are, are also shielded in that light. And as they connect, the Night Soil men are staying down. Um, for those of you who were in the tavern section of the speakeasy, Adelaide will come running around the corner. Uh, first, just want to assess and make sure that like that door's not open and these things aren't walking in this way. Yes, that door appears to be locked. Um, Colt and Zeke are currently sliding the like the drapes Shutters. closed, keeping everything shut down, kind of ushering everybody back towards the guild halls, away from the windows. Okay. Everyone, this way! To Buck's room! What is it, Adelaide? I don't know. It's, it's, it, it's like a... I don't know! Come here! <laughs> guys all go running back towards the guild hall you see buck kind of one hand on the door kind of propped open other hand holding the revolver Styx is just stood there 
and he's smacking the body in front of the door. Yeah! Look at it. T, what is that? It looks like what was in the paper. What was in the paper? <laughs> the night soil men. What's a night soil man? That. Yeah, Adelaide yeah. will turn to Carol. Have you ever heard of these before? I haven't seen them in my life. Is this like a normal thing here? You guys have, you know of this and it's just a thing? But they don't try to break into other people's homes, do they? Yeah. No. Is there uh, any undead uh, rift energy coming from this this thing? Rift energy? No, oddly enough. Really? But there is like a potent stench. It's not too hard to figure out. For Carol, there have been countless civilizations. And now that you've, you're seeing them in action, it's starting to, starting to click. In Ciderland, they look down on this practice. They think it's very disgraceful. In Ciderland and in most areas of Carcasso, you burn the dead. You burn the body, you release the spirit. The only cultures you've ever heard of that maintain the body after death, it's either a saint or a criminal. And criminal bodies are used for everything from studying medicine, science like that, to manual labor in Carcasso. This is just your first exposure to seeing the night soil men. They're very unsettling. Most of the time, people are in their houses after dark anyway, just because they don't want to deal with this. That's what you're able to piece together. There's countless cultures that have used these in various degrees. Um, it's just very unsettling to see it in such a wide scale. Usually there'd be one or two for a small village. Here you've already seen about a dozen just on this block. Um, the body that is currently <laughs> being smicked in front of you on the floor has a very bizarre carving in the middle of its forehead. Um, and it seems to be a rune of control. It's not necessarily a Minoan rune. It would just be an arcane rune of some kind. Um, but it's one of the more recognizable ones. Um, control shows up in a lot of religious texts, uh, just given that that's how you reach out. So it's easy enough for you to piece together. There are control runes kind of carved into the at least the body that's in front of you. Um, and there are more bullet holes in this thing than there should have been to take it down. These things, Even for a night soil man? The night soil men are historically very brittle. Because the longer they're alive, the more they decay anyway. So they will continue to rot. There's nothing preventing that. Yeah. And once they start to get skeletal, if the body can't hold together, the magic will fade with them. Sticks picked up on this real quick. Sticks to lift the veil a little bit for everybody. Sticks has a he's got like an undead radar. If something's nearby, his his he gets on edge. So he immediately picked up on this, just didn't get a read on why. For Buck it's more annoying because you're like, oh, it's this. Like, why the le of all days to have a problem with your garbage men? <laughs> why is it <laughs> now? Your garbage um, men. But for sticks looking down the street, there is a kind of shutter down your little, your little straw spine. Seeing that trunk torch, trunk torch and the undead do not mix. do not mix at all. Yeah, the trunk torches historically. They just emanate radiant light. Mm -hmm. Holiness. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is one of the few ways to permanently put down the undead. So seeing one of those out there, you're just kind of unsettled because you're like, okay, for sticks even, this is a bigger deal than a couple garbage men out of control. They wouldn't send this for anything else. Callum, so oddly bad. enough, in this moment, you're like, oh, the Night Soil men are like malfunctioning. Like something's wrong with them. And then you go, why do, why do I know that? I know something. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's and excited. As you, <laughs> uh, from your intuition, there is a scientific reason that this is going on. There is an arcane, magical, supernatural reason that the bodies can animate, but they are blank slates that you just tell what to do, and they will do it. Something, they've changed a variable in this experiment. That clicks for you immediately. You go, oh, they like someone did something to these things. They altered them in some way. Okay. What it is, you don't know, but you're like, I, I know that. Yeah. I knew a thing. Yeah. Given how quick that came to me, I'll assume everyone knows that already. T, what did you roll for? How'd you do? Uh, religion 28. Not only do you recognize why a trunk torch might be here, you recognize this trunk torch. Oh. 
This trunk torch was in Yarborough 30 some odd years ago. Looks exactly the same as it did on that fateful day. This specific trunk torch was the right hand elephant of the founder of the Church of the Rising Sun, which you have seen zero iconography or mention of since your return to your senses. Part of your religion for now, I will say, even just walking through the streets of Carcasso, though they don't have a huge presence here, the Church of the Third Sun, you've seen everywhere. There's three or four cathedrals just on your way to the speakeasy. The Church of the Rising Sun believed that mankind had fallen too far into sin and needed to be cleansed and started fresh. The Church of the Third Sun believes that mankind is on its third iteration and needs to be cleansed again. Oh, they so are, they were cleansed and then it wasn't enough. And they, a so every time a mass, a big war uh, happens, okay. any follow. huge turnover of population, that church believes they've ascended. And then a new one will form in its place because people are always looking for something to blame. So the Church of the Third Sun having the same trunk torch as the Church of the Rising Sun is a problem to you for reasons that we'll get into some other time. Okay. But that trunk torch immediately clicks for you. You have a flash into your brain of the guardian spirit rising in Yarborough to battle this trunk torch and being banished. It specifically was responsible for the deaths of Calliope and Eliator. Drew, does it sound like the the, uh, the guards are winning this fight or... Yeah. Does it? It's, okay. It's... It's a fight they should be winning much faster, but they are winning. They are putting these things down now that the Trunk Torch seems to be empowering them. Mm -hmm. But you see a semi-familiar military structure of six men kneeling with rifles and six men behind loading their next shot. And then oh, so they when they fire, they advance back, they load. The gun blades do have a fatal flaw in that they cannot have a chamber. Yeah. They have to have a single barrel. Because of the blade, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, but they have a very regimented military structure. One line goes down, the other line comes up to reload. They take their shot, they stand ready with bayonets, they bounce back, they take their next shot. They should be winning much faster. Okay, and but then... These things seem to be taking more shots than they should. Looking past them, because I'm assuming their backs are to us. Right? Yeah, so basically what you're seeing is down the, l down the lane from you. You're currently on Fiddler's Lane. It is the one that runs north to south all the way through Carcassonne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a busy street. You are seeing, basically, these guys are at a, at a crossroads almost. Mm -hmm. So there are 12 soldiers facing east, west, north, and south down aisles, and they are all shooting. Gotcha. Um, did you, um, I don't know, would you have made like that rune thing, uh, let everybody know? Any of that, any intel that you guys got is your prerogative to share that, or Yeah, not. that's what I figured. All of those realizations have happened at the same time. As soon as you see these bodies, you all pick up different stuff. I would mention the runes because I've been already mentioning my own runes. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. With that, Buck's gonna look around rooftops or anything to see if he can see somebody who is essentially master puppeteering these things. Looking up on the rooftops, you see the guy that was drinking next to you. Um, same green eye, just kind of moving a hand very lazily, just puppeteering. And floating next to him is a purple gas cloud with two two hands and then kind of a top third of a skull that's just kind of resting over and you see two little eyes floating in between and it is also kind of puppeteering things and you're watching as the bullets are hitting the gas cloud next to this person is putting a hand on them and blood is shooting out of their body as the night soil men continue to walk Whoa. Okay. Given that uh, Buck is professional with taking down Rifkin, uh, he's just he just immediately like this kind of like not supernatural force takes over, but just like an instinct kicks in, and you see him just drop to a knee and just chamber a bullet and fire at it. As you drop to a knee and take a shot, and it punctures through the thigh of this guy, and it shoots up in through the top of the skull on top of that cloud, shatters the skull, and the cloud kind of shudders for a moment. You would hear in Carcassonne specifically, Chaisa! And it looks down at you and just spits and then hobbles 
kind of further away on the rooftop, and the Night Soul men just <laughs> crumple to the ground in the streets. Uh, I'm just going to look at Sticks and be like, time to get your boots wet, and Buck just takes off towards it. Buck tears through Ember Alley, looking north. He sees Lao Tzu leap from the roof of the village orchid botanist, barely scrabbling under the roof of the local candlemaker's shop. Shingles shatter on the cobbled streets below. Crossing Stokemont Street, Buck races towards a clearing where his quarry leaps inelegantly into a well, disappearing into the night below. As Buck reaches the edge, he can see no further trail, and realizing he's now out past curfew, he retreats to the safety of the guild hall before he's spotted. As you all settle in, realizing that you've, through one means or another, saddled up, creating an adventuring guild, for Carol and Faraday, you have a roof over your head. For T as well, this is a it's a comforting feeling. For Buck, you just feel shackled again. You're like, I'm just, I got places to be, man. For Adelaide, you have somewhere to report back to if, if any leads dry up. And Callum, there's five people you can <laughs> pull information from to figure out what happened to you. But as we all settle in for a potentially unsettling night after the all. You know, all the excitement of the gunfire in the streets. We'll pick it up in the morning. Next time. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you so much. Session two. Oh, boy. If you enjoyed the second episode of Riftkin, please consider leaving a like on the video to show your support. If you'd like to see more of Riftkin and follow along as we begin our new adventure, why not subscribe to the channel? If you'd like to help us out in other ways, you can follow the links in this video's description box to our Patreon. From there, you can join the discussions in our Discord server, check out the post-show, still rolling, catch the new pre-shows, now airing on Wednesdays, and see extended versions of each episode a week early. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about this session, and what you would name your adventuring guild. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next week as the Signature Six follow Lao Tzu's trail.